for the low, low price of $94,000, you can actually buy a brand new two-year-old GMC Sierra that has a pretty impressive hockey puck lift. And here's the 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor that's been sitting here in various spots for over a month. And I have to mention something. I need to write a wrong for you guys. And that's the all new, brand new iForce Max Hybrid Land Cruiser by Toyota. This is super cool. It's a 2024 TRX. You can tell because it's in Delmonica Red. And when these first came out three years ago, they started MSRP at about $71,000. So let's see what this one stickers for for 2024. Base price, $96,000, so a $25,000 jump. After options, level two package, that's the big one, $125,000. And then you tack on fees and taxes, and it's well over hundred thirty dollars grand. I will say on my channel, the T-Rex and the Raptor are, are definitely the two funnest trucks that I've ever driven. But seriously, what has happened? One hundred thirty dollars for a Dodge Ram pickup truck with a supercharged V8? Welcome back, guys. Today, you get to come along with me on a tour through a few different high-volume car dealerships in a town of about 60,000 people that's located in the Pacific Northwest so that we can see exactly what pricing, transparency, and vehicle inventories look like between these dealerships. And spoiler alert, there's actually some pretty concerning things that I'm going to get to show you, but they're going to be scattered throughout this video. And if you like what you get to see today, please consider liking this video. That smock, the kindness really goes a long way. It helps me know you want to watch more stuff like this, but also helps you by having YouTube know you want to watch more stuff like this too. Thank you. I'm starting out today's video on the accessory lot at a Toyota dealership, and I have something pretty concerning to show you guys involving the new fourth generation Tacomas over there. But let's start with the third generations. We all know that they hold their value really well. This one is six years old. They want $35,000 for it. It has 62,000 miles, and that is what the used car dealership sticker looks like. So you'll notice that's, of course, on all these used ones. Check out the Army Green one. It's $43,000. What about the Calvary Blue one right here? And by the way, I've owned a couple Tacomas. I really like these. But $36,000 for a five-year-old one with, you know, 78,000 miles. But now let's go over to the brand new 2024 fourth generation Tacomas. This one, it's in red, one owner, it's an SR5, obviously it's a 2024, and it doesn't have a Moroni sticker, it has the used car dealership sticker. It has two miles on it, and $45,000 for an SR5 with options, which I would assume is what this is MSRP, but it's already been titled. The warranty has already started whenever that happened, and it really hasn't actually been owned, I would assume. No one's driven this for two miles, when usually that's the minimum vehicles come off the shipping truck with. Or what about this one, another 2024, one owner Carfax right there. And same thing, $45,000. Literally the exact same pricing for that SR5. This one actually does have a Moroni sticker. This is an SR5 and it's $43,000. So I wonder if they called a used, marked it up a couple grand more, and they also add the $1,300 worth of nonsense right there, sill jet, paint protection, and theft deterrent. So I think that's kind of, kind of questionable. Also, here's another one. This one also is used, and it's $47,000. This is a TRD off-road, so you would expect a slightly higher price commanded. But seriously, what's going on? Brand new, or the used SR5 for a couple thousand dollars more. Quite interesting. And now I'm at the main lot, and you can see there's some of the brand new Priuses, which are actually pretty cool for being a Prius. Or this GR86, which I've driven and reviewed these and the BRZs. And honestly, they're worth their money, especially for $33,000. That's one of the funnest cars that you could ever buy at that price point, especially with the factory warranty. But you can see there's quite a few vehicles here. There's Highlanders and Benzas up front. There's new and used Priuses. It looks like basically alternating right here. And there's no shortage. Even if I zoom in six times zoom, there's still a lot of stuff all throughout this dealership. But let's see if there's anything else interesting to show you here. All right, we might find something interesting over here. And I haven't been over here yet, so you're going to see it as quickly as I see it. But I do want to mention I've been here in the past, and I have seen SR5 Toyotas with the roof rack, the wheel and tire package, and set up to look like TRD Pros for basically the same price, which is very concerning. But this one actually is a TRD Pro, and $62,000, plus $1,300 of that nonsense right there. The window sticker, though, is $57,000. So you're going to be paying probably seven or $8,000 after all the extra taxes, fees, and markup on a Toyota Foreigner. TRD Pro, which is already overpriced at that $57,000 mark. So there's the TRD Pro that I just showed you. And then there's another one over here, which from a distance, I honestly was expecting it to be the marked up SR5. But notice that this one, 
one owner, 2024, so your warranty has already started whenever it was titled the first time, and it has not a Moroni sticker. It's used $62,000 or 61 and some change, so $61,000 for this used one, which we know that the new one MSRP window sticker is already $57,000, so $4,000 more overpriced for a used one with probably two miles. I honestly didn't look at it that time, but yep, two miles right there. And this is actually really cool. This is the brand new Toyota Land Cruiser with the iForce Max. I've not seen one of these in person yet, so you'll get my impressions of it in real time. First of all, I know it's on a platform, but it actually looks a little bit bigger than I thought. And now that I'm standing basically at the same height, it actually still seems a little bit bigger than I thought. I'm five foot 11. I think the roof line is probably at or just above my head. Lots of visibility. I would assume those windows are actually pretty tall. Likely a little bit better than the Foreigner. The mirrors fold in. Black handles, black wheels. It's just a basic all-season tire. Nothing special with that. The hitch is covered. Full-size spare under there. Probably only like nine inches of ground clearance and coils in the back or springs, I should say. I can't tell if you can step on this or not, though. Nope, that's plastic. You could maybe step on that one. The window does come up individually from the hatch. But honestly, in person, this actually looks a little bit better than I thought it would. It is very angular, like other people have mentioned. The wheel gap looks fairly similar between the front and the rear, maybe a little bit higher in the rear. I'd imagine the payload capacity is somewhere slightly over a thousand pounds, but I can't open the door to show you that specifically. But it's actually pretty cool. It doesn't show the price because this one specifically has been sold, but there's a lot of plasticky materials. Honestly, just looking at this, knowing that it's a four-cylinder turbo hybrid, which you can get a crossover with that type of engine for, you know, thirty-five dollars to $40,000, I would assume that this being body on frame, it's maybe worth forty-five dollars to fifty-five. dollars But in reality, we know that these are being asked sixty dollars or so, plus markup, maybe seventy-five, eighty, dollars which I think is absurd. Here are a few RAV4s, hybrids and non-hybrid, hybrid, hybrid, non-hybrid. But it's just silly, like, what is going on for why there's all these 2024s with one owner? Comment below, how many miles do you think this one has? Put your best guess down in the description right now. Ooh, 17, so this one has maybe been driven across town before it was brought back, sold, maybe it was the wrong vehicle. I find that very suspicious because usually test drives are more than 17 miles. I'm currently at kind of the accessory lot for a Ford dealership, and I want to mention a few things I find very interesting starting with this F-150 Lightning over here. It's a 2023, so it's already a year old, and we know that on average vehicles lose 15 to 20% of their value in the first year. So as soon as you drive this 23 off the lot, it's technically a one-year-old used vehicle. So window sticker, Ford actually thought some sucker would pay $95,000 for this. There's about $800 worth of options. The bed liner I feel like is a little bit overpriced. The door edge guards is literally just nonsense. You can buy those on Amazon for a couple cents, whether it's that thing or it's this. You can buy any of that plastic for a few cents on Amazon. It does have the bed liner, thankfully, because I've found trucks with that markup that don't actually have the bed liner. But $95,000 for this. It's been sitting here for well over a month. $75,000. So 20 grand off right off the bat. But I actually just looked at this one online and now it's 23 and a half thousand off. So they're only asking $71,000 for this. Only $71,000. If I'm going to spend that much on an electric truck, I'm going to buy a, a base model Cybertruck. I don't think an F-150 with a battery pack is worth $71,000, but what are your thoughts? Please comment below. Or over here is a Ford Maverick, which I reviewed one of these a little bit over a year ago, and I'll probably do a Ford Maverick review video in just a little bit. But this is supposed to be the budget truck that starts at $20,000, but I've seen these loaded out with the Lariat trim up to about $40,000. So this is all-wheel drive, meaning it's a 2-liter turbo because the hybrid is only front-wheel drive now. And 2024, so it is brand new, $33,500. So this is the price that an F-150 was about 10 years ago after all the rebates. Remember, guys, when you could get $15,000 off of a brand new truck? Or about five years ago, this was the price of a Ford Ranger when the fourth gens first came out back in 2019. But now it's the mini truck, which these aren't body on frame. These are unibody. And honestly, a lot of people really like these. I remember enjoying it when I drove it. And the one that I reviewed had the 2-liter turbo, and it did a 6.5 seconds here to 60. So they are pretty stout. And in today's market, 33 grand for this is actually a pretty good deal compared to what else you could be buying. And here's the 2024 Ford Bronco Raptor that's been sitting here in various spots for over a month. And I have to mention something. I need to right a wrong for you guys. 
in one of my videos about a month ago. I mentioned that this thing was MSRP $93,000 and I thought that that was a fair deal. I didn't mean that because I thought that was a good value. I meant that I thought that that was fair being MSRP and not marked up because when I checked these out, you know, a year and a half ago and this was all the rage, the big deal, they were marked up. I saw one personally that was a used 2022. That was, I think, $132,000 for a red one. And that was absolutely absurd. So I've never seen one for only MSRP. That's why I thought this was a fair deal. But in reality, it's not. This is worth $70,000, just like a lot of, you know, performance vehicles and kind of the, the apex vehicles like the Hellcat, the GT500, the Ford Raptor, what these used to be $70,000, another $90,000. But even though it stickers MSRP 93, I think it's going to be here for a long time because I think that's overvalued by, by the manufacturer. But at least the dealership is not trying to cheat you into markup like they, you know, might have been a year ago when these were pretty cool, pretty popular. I've pointed these out before because they have been on the lot of a lot of Ford dealerships for months because they're carryover 2023s. But you seriously need to be so careful, guys, if you're going to buy a 2022 or 2023 model that hasn't sold because not only are the gaskets drying out and it's been sitting for a long time, the battery's probably gone dead once or twice, but as soon as you drive it off the lot, it's instantly a used one or two year old vehicle, which means on average you lose 15 to 30% depending on one or two years. So even though that this dealership is asking $11,000 off, and that's if you trade in a vehicle on this Lincoln Navigator, it's still $100,000. And as soon as you drive it off the lot, it's probably worth 80 if you were to resell to them immediately. So you need to be so careful. This seriously, I don't think it's gonna sell anytime soon. And could probably go to auction or they're just gonna have to take a big loss on it is my best guess because the navigator it's just a fancier version of the expedition which is already very overpriced for a ford three-row suv in fact there's another navigator and an expedition side by side over here in fact there's a second expedition so this one is also 11 grand off and that's only if you trade in a vehicle so they can make several thousand dollars off of that but this one is a hundred and five thousand dollars it again is a used one or you know a year old basically used and then it has $250 for this little bit of plastic. And then here is an expedition. So you can see, you know, the lines, the dimensions, everything. It's it's literally the same vehicle. And how much is this? Usually they're 70s to 80s. Whoo, $91,000 for the Ford Expedition. Thankfully, it's a 2024. They do have the high output EcoBoost, kind of like the F-150 Raptor. But still, $91,000 for a Ford 3 row SUV. I think that's wishful thinking. But just to be sure, let's check out one other one, $86,000. And this is a Expedition Max, still 2024 with the EcoBoost. Yeah, I just don't see these selling anytime soon, especially at those type of prices, because people can't afford those. That's more than the average family makes in a year. I'm now at the Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram dealership, and there's a few interesting things to note. First, you'll notice that the parking lot is blocked off on this entryway, but that's for obvious reasons. They're under construction right now. But this is the accessory lot. And there's really not a lot going on here. There's only, you know, a slim row of cars with some pretty good spacing in between. But there's a few things to point out here. Here's the 2024 Ram TRX. These were $71,000 when they first came out three years ago. Now, this one, after its options, can be spec to about $125,000, which also seems to be what most dealerships have been doing. They've been ordering very high-loaded, high-trim-level, and high-packaged vehicles. Or here, here's a Ram. This looks like the typical 5th gen Ram, but you'll notice that the hood bulge is a little bit different. SST, so that's the inline 6-cylinder turbo. And let's see, it's $70,000 the way this Laramie is configured. And I honestly can't even tell if those seats are leather. They kind of look like they're cloth with some ventilation in there. So $70,000 for a truck. There's a few Super Duties, or I should say the heavy duties for it being a Ram 2500s. But here's a Grand Wagoneer. This competes against things like the Escalade. And I honestly don't know why or how Jeep thinks that they're competitive with the luxury brands, but it's the Grand Wagoneer, not the regular Wagoneer, which is a few tens of thousands of dollars less. But for the Series 3, it's $123,000. This is the type of vehicle being more luxury based that in probably two years, it's lost about 40 to 50% of its value. So. That's a hard sale. A lot of people can't afford to take such a big hit because what if you buy it and you have to return it a few years later? You're going to be underwater if you don't pay it in cash up front. Or here is a four-door Willis Jeep, which the Willis is basically one of the lowest trim levels that you can get in a Jeep, so I wouldn't expect it to be too expensive. So even without a lot of options, it's still $49,000, although there might be some room 
you know, for the price to come down. But $50,000 for a bare bones Jeep, which has cloth seats, very few safety features, and honestly doesn't offer a whole lot. Or here's another Grand Wagoneer. Let's see how much this one is and if it's another six figure vehicle, which I'm assuming it likely is because the base price is, you know, in the one teens. So 113 starting, 121. That's insane. $121,000 for a three year old Jeep SUV. And here's a small row of maybe eight, nine Wranglers. I did have someone, one of you guys commented on one of my videos in the last month or two, and you mentioned that you bought the 4xe, the 4xe, which is detected by the blue badging. And you said that it lost about 40% of its value in 10 months. I'm assuming maybe you had to appraise, maybe you tried to sell, you know, return it. But $60,000 for this 4xe, so losing 40% or $24,000, that is a big hit. I'm not surprised that they don't keep their value. And a Wrangler, these seriously have not been updated much in decades. So even though this is the JL generation that started in 2018, I just don't see how they're expecting so much on the MSRP. Let's see with this blue 4XE. Yeah, another $60,000 Jeep. The blue does look cool. There is metallic flake in it, but if you're gonna lose 25 grand after one year of ownership, how do you justify that? And there's just a line of maybe a dozen heavy duty trucks over here. I'll maybe pick this Laramie. Laramie is usually a mid upper trim level. And let's see what this one stickers for. It's in red, which is a nice color. Base price 67,000. It is the 6.7 liter Cummins, $83,000. Does it have cloth seats? It actually has kind of like a suede type of seat, some white piping around it. But seriously, who's buying, you know, an $80,000 Ram truck that doesn't even have a bed liner and going to use this for work when it has fancy seats, no bed liner? That's a pavement princess as far as I'm concerned. But as you guys can see, this accessory lot really has hardly anything here. Maybe 30 vehicles, if that, if we count them up. So I'll go to the main dealership, show you that for maybe the next 30 seconds or so, and we'll see if there's anything interesting over there. This is now the main dealership and there's enough room that you can drive around, but also enough that they probably could fit a few more cars without you feeling claustrophobic. But this is a whole row of the Jeep Grand Cherokee L, which is the large three row one. And base price 50,000, 58,000 after extra options. 18 city, 25 highway. So, I mean, I guess for a three row SUV, that's honestly not too bad and much cheaper than the Grand Wagoneer, which I think we have a few Wagoneers over there. So I'll show you what those cost as well. But let's see if there's any hybrids. Yep, here is the blue tow hook. So this should be a 4XE. And I actually don't see a Maroni sticker anywhere unless it's behind this dark tint. Nope, nothing there. So I will post online what this one goes for if it's actually publicly posted online. And then there's a few more large Grand Cherokees. And on approved credit, it looks like you could get these for up to 550 a month. But it doesn't say, you know, how long is the term? Is that leasing? Is it financing? You really don't know what you're paying, so you're going to have to talk to someone. And this fifth gen Ram, it looks like this must be another SST, which is the turbo inline six engine. No bed cover, although it does have the Ram box on the side. It is a 2025, which is pretty impressive for this being the month of May. Base price $64,000 for this Laramie. 69, so it really doesn't have many options. It's pretty basic, pretty bare bones. And you can see, hopefully you guys can see inside, there's some, you know, brown on the dashboard. Uh, the seats, they kind of look similar to the Laramie in the heavy duty one. I can't really tell what material that is. And I don't think it says when it talks about the power adjustment seat, but, and that they're heated, ventilated, but it doesn't say what kind. So again, this is a pavement princess. It's not meant for work. It's not ready for work. It's ready to be driven around and enjoyed. Whether you're in hot temperatures, cold temperatures, your butt's going to be having a good time. If your wallet, you know, being that much lighter can justify the cost but these are the wagoneers so not to be confused with the grand wagoneers and just looking at them i don't actually see a maroni sticker present on any of them so maybe they're used maybe people bought them and brought them back right away i can't specifically tell as i'm not as familiar with these but i'll post one of them on the screen if it's listed online for what msrp is for and then the chrysler 300 so these like the charger and challenger they died last year in 2023 so if it's new which it is with the maroni 2023 base price $43,000. It does have the Hemi, but not the 6.4, which that was a limited run. Kind of like the SRTs from a few years ago, but kind of a cool vehicle if you can justify 53 grand for a year old Chrysler 300 that only has the basic 5.7 Hemi. And because these vehicles weigh 4,500 pounds, they're not quick, but they are kind of cool. And it does actually look pretty good. 
But over here, this is basically all just used cars and I'm not seeing anything that really draws my attention or sparks my interest. So I think we'll move on to the next dealership. I'm wrapping things up today at a GMC dealership and I wanna point out a few things. One of them is gonna be absolutely hilarious. But for some of these, the ones that have the sticker on the visor, you can see, you know, $55,000 for this vehicle. There's not a Moroni sticker. I can tell it's a used window sticker, like a, just a spec sticker. So that's a lot of money for a used pickup truck. This one doesn't have one of those, so it's probably a brand new Sierra, but let's double check. Yep, a Moroni sticker. So this one is $61,000. It does have a bed liner. Honestly, it looks like a really good truck, but it's the small four-door. It's not even the full-size four-door, and it's $61,000. And it has cloth seats. Can you guys see that? And it doesn't even have the console. It's a freaking bench. That is absurd. And it's the 5.3 liter. It's not even the 6.2 liter or a diesel. That is absolutely absurd. This one is actually pretty cool. This is the Sierra Duramax AT4X. I've actually reviewed a couple ZR2s on my channel, and I've even done the ZR2 Bison for a full review of that, which is the Chevy version of this. So I do want to mention a few things. The X just means it's the serious off-roader. It has almost a foot of ground clearance. It has the Multimatic shocks in the back, which are those big gold ones, if you've seen that on GM products before, like ZR2s. And honestly, it looks really good. It has the AEV bumper, the different wheels, things like that. But when I've driven these before, they were almost $90,000 trucks. Yeah, this one is literally a $90,000 truck. And then the payload capacity on the ZR2 Bison I drove was 1048. And I remember that specifically just because that was hilariously low. There's mid-sized trucks I've driven, like the new 24 Ranger, uh, the Ranger Lariat that I reviewed recently. And that had a 1500 pound payload. So it's impressive, it looks really good, but it's $90,000. And there's actually quite a few of these AT4Xs right here, as well as over here, there's a whole line of them. There's three more. So quite a few, there's over half a million dollars between those six trucks and inventory. And just for reference, looking at one of the Sierra AT4Xs next to even a Denali, which on its own looks pretty good. It's definitely a much smaller vehicle and it just doesn't stand out, kind of like how the Raptors stand out to the regular F-150s. But I want to show you guys something pretty crazy over here, and we'll wrap this video up. This is the two-year-old Harley-Davidson $94,000 Sierra. Thankfully, it does have the 6.2-liter Ecotec engine, and MSRP originally was 70. So keep in mind, two years old, as soon as you drive it off the lot, what they're going to offer you on trade-in is probably the typical 35-40% less than you just paid because now it's a two-year-old used vehicle. But this one, Originally, they thought it was worth 107 with the Harley Davidson package. Right now, they're asking 94, which I don't think it's going to sell. It's been here for quite a while because I've seen this in the past. It does look pretty cool. And last time I mentioned, I assumed it had a hockey puck lift in the back, but I did not confirm that. And you guys are worth knowing. So, yep, that's a big lift in the back. And then a monotube shock. Overall, though, it looks pretty cool under here. Lots of ground clearance. But yeah, that's a lot of money for a, you know, a block lift kit. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, please consider liking this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. Otherwise, I wish you the best. I hope to see you again soon. And until next time, take care.